Good morning, my name is John, and I want to personally thank each and every one of you for joining us for our online worship service this morning. Now look, I would love it if you would take a moment right now, go ahead and like and share this service so your friends, your family, all of your contacts, they can hear the same good news and experience the same awesome worship that you're about to experience. Now, if this is your first time worshiping with us, a huge thank you to you. In a moment, a countdown is going to begin. It's going to be relatively short. There's going to be some cool music. Enjoy that because when the countdown hits zero, the service will start. You're going to get to hear incredible, uplifting, inspiring music. You're going to have an opportunity to even talk to God. It's called prayer. And you're going to hear a relevant, biblically-based message that's going to inspire you, encourage you, and maybe even challenge you to live your life a little bit better. With all of that said, the service is going to begin soon. As a matter of fact, it's going to begin in four minutes. Woke up early just to see the sun With every possibility you're making all of me undone Not so sure yet, but I think that I might Nothing to your body as you sway on the backseat of my bike for a happy
Good morning, Foundation Church. Thank you for joining us online this morning. We're going to invite you to sing, and as we sing, we're going to declare the greatness of our God. He is a promise maker and a promise keeper. And he will finish what he begins. We're going to invite you to sing that with us this morning. Thank you once again for joining us at Foundation Church. My name's John, I'm the pastor here, and I am beyond excited to worship with each and every one of you. Now look, I really quickly wanted to update you all on two things. Number one, I know you know this, in-person worship has begun in Vestal. In-person worship will begin in Oxford on Sunday, August 9th, which 
it's coming right up. But we are so honored and excited to get to worship online with each and every one of you every week. Thank you so much for making the time in your day to worship with us. Keep coming back. The other thing I wanted to update you all on is I said last week that we are collecting cans, and we had this crazy, audacious goal of 400 cans in one week. Well, I got to say, you all blew that away. We collected 706 cans in one week. So kids, give yourselves a big, big round of applause. Adults, give yourselves a big, big round of applause as well. good. 
this service has been going amazing for you so far, but it's about to get better because you have the privilege, the opportunity right now to speak to the creator of the universe, to speak to God personally. Now we make this space in our service each and every week for you to talk to God about whatever is going on in your life. This can be really, really good stuff, really, really stressful stuff, or anything in between. We're going to conclude this time of talking to God, this silent prayer, by praying together the Lord's Prayer. If that's a prayer you don't know, we'll even put it right up on the screen for you when that time comes. So don't be afraid to open your eyes and look if you need to. With that instruction given, I'm gonna invite you to join me in a time of prayer.
God Almighty, hear our prayers as now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 70, 80, 90 miles per hour, 96. My dashboard was vibrating. We were zipping by cars. Maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself. My name's John. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Friends, I would be honored if you would take a moment right now and go ahead and like and share this message so your friends, your family, all of your contacts, they can hear the good news you're about to hear. Because you see, today we are continuing our New Beginnings series. This is a series built around that act of following Jesus, also known as discipleship. Now, last week we talked about a new job, starting a new job, and how there's a new sense of identity that comes along with it. Last week we said there's this really famous saying, fake it till you make it. To put it in a little nicer way of thinking, maybe name it and claim it. The idea was that sometimes we have to do the job before we feel like we are that person who does that job. Well, today we're going to be talking about getting a new car, that excitement, that rush, and oh, by the way, the new habits, the new patterns and routines that come along with a new car. But let's go back to that story I was telling, and let's start off with this simple question, and that is, what was your first car, and how fast did you drive it? What was your first car and how fast did you drive it? Go ahead and take a second and comment right down below. First car, how fast? So my first car was a 1988 Pontiac Le Mans, two doors, white. The car was probably honestly a piece of junk. But to me, it was the coolest, fastest, most amazing car ever. And as you just heard me say, that car broke 70, it broke 80, it broke 90, Somewhere around 91 or 92, everything started to shake. By the time we hit 96, we were really, really worried. The entire car was going to shake apart. I was driving on Interstate 81. I was heading north. I was on the wrong road. I was supposed to be on Interstate 88. At any rate, I was going really, really fast to get to a meeting, which I finally did get to just as it was ending. <laughs> So here's the thing with this car. I loved this car. I drove it fast, not all that often because it didn't drive that fast. But I would take it to work, and I would drive the long way to work. I would take it to run errands for my parents, and I would drive the long way to take the errands. The car for me was freedom. It meant freedom to do what I wanted to do, to go where I wanted to go, and it meant a whole new list of new habits for me. All of a sudden, now I'm driving to the gas station to fill it up. I'm going to the car wash to clean it. And yeah, I'm learning all kinds of new back roads and back ways to get places that are like right next door to my house. Well, look, the habits that come along with a new car, they're not that dissimilar from the habits and patterns, the change in behavior that comes along with a new identity in Christ. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Today, we're going to be talking about our discipleship and those new patterns or habits that come along with it. And I'm going to be using a passage of scripture from Galatians. I'll be reading Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. And then we're going to jump ahead and read verses 19 all the way to 25. You can certainly follow along with whatever Bible you have there with you. But we'll also post the words on the screens uh, right below me. So the, the passage begins by saying, You my brothers and sisters, we're called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. The acts of the flesh, they are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, 
selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, also known as patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Now, it's important to know that this passage from Galatians was written to new Christians about a new faith that they had taken on, a new identity that they had claimed for themselves. Let's go back to the beginning of that passage, Galatians 5, verse 13. In verse 13, the author, who is the Apostle Paul, he says, You, my brothers and sisters, you were called to be free. This is really, really important for Paul. Going back to those new Christians, these Galatians, these people who lived in the city of Galatia, they were new Christians. They weren't Jews. They were Gentiles. They were people who didn't know anything about God's chosen people and therefore hadn't observed the laws, the Mosaic law that the Jews had. Paul is going around and converting these Gentiles, these outsiders, to this Christianity. And there's this huge debate going on at this time what does it look like to be a good Christian? Now, Paul is suggesting that it looks like one thing, but specifically the Galatians, they were encountering Jewish Christians. They were called Judaizers who were suggesting it looked a little different. And so Paul starts off by saying, you were called to be free. For Paul, the freedom is largely from the Mosaic law, but specifically in this context, for Paul, the freedom It's from circumcision for men. Yeah, that's right. It turned out these Judaizers were telling grown men who were joining Christianity, who were becoming followers of Jesus, that's great, but there's one more thing you have to do. You have to be circumcised. These grown men were understandably balking at what they needed to have cut where to follow Jesus. For Paul, this was as much about evangelism as anything. He's saying, This is hurting the good news of the gospel. It turns out the gospel, the good news, doesn't sound so good if you tell somebody they have to cut a part of their body off to follow it. And so Paul starts out by saying, you were called to be free, but it's not freedom from everything always. And so he continues in verse 14 by saying, for the entire law, the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, there's two assumptions that Paul is making here. The first one is that you actually love yourself. That you actually love who you are, that you take care of yourself, that you care for yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, then to love your neighbor as yourself, it's not going to look nearly as good. That brings me to a question I want to ask all of you. And that question is, how do you love yourself? Or in other words, how do you care for yourself? What kinds of activities, patterns do you have to take care of you? Go ahead and comment down below right now, how do you love yourself? The second assumption that Paul had with this passage, this is Galatians 5.14, the second assumption that Paul had was not only that you would love yourself, but also that everyone is your neighbor. Now, you may or may not have heard this story, but Jesus told this story of the Good Samaritan. And in it, Jesus said that everyone is our neighbor. Those that we think are our friends, as well as those who we consider even our enemies, they're all our neighbors. And Paul is assuming that A, you love yourself, and B, you realize that everybody is your neighbor. And for him, if you do that, if you love everyone as you love yourself, you're fulfilling the entirety of the law. Now, what happens next is Paul goes through this big, long listing, both of the fruits of the flesh, as well as the fruits of the Spirit. I don't want to break all those down. We could spend like countless weeks going over these. But what I do want to do is highlight that there are two main things going on in the fruits of the flesh and two main things contrasting that in the fruits of the spirit. And that is that for Paul, the fruits of the flesh, well, they're all about perverting, distorting, 
changing what God has given to us that was good and making it not good? And B, and maybe even more importantly for Paul's readers, the fruits of the flesh lead to division, to dissension, to fighting. For him, these are all bad things. For Paul, the fruits of the Spirit, these are, again, A, all about God. It's all about God and what God gives to us, what God does for us, what God wants for us. And B, the fruits of the Spirit is all about building and maintaining community, about drawing people together, not dividing them. I have to be honest, in the world that we live right now, a lot of people are pretty divided. And I feel like a lot of things that were good have somehow found their way to being not so good. And so we could all probably use more of the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. Amen? So look, Paul ends the passage that we read today. This is Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. He ends this passage by saying, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. For Paul, again, the freedom that we have, it's not freedom unto ourselves, but it's freedom that comes from God and exists because of God. And so for him, he's saying, we're going to live by that spirit and we're going to keep in step with the spirit. Another way to say that is, since we live by the spirit, let us walk with the spirit. And what a beautiful image of how we are meant to live our lives. Well, look, I want to go back to that new car imagery for you, that new car. And I want to talk a little bit more about the habits or the patterns that you have when you get a new car. So I know for some of you, you've only ever had new to you cars that is okay. You will feel the same things. You're going to be able to relate to what I'm talking about just the same. You see, because not only do we find ourselves going to gas stations and car washes, not only do we find ourselves driving on new roads, especially if that new car works well and you enjoy driving it, but we also find ourselves doing things like parking a little further away from other cars. You know you do it. When you get a new car, you park a little further away because you don't want that first dent, ding, or scratch on your new car. Also, I found, at least for me, and maybe this is just a me thing, if I'm driving that new car any distance, I'm stopping to get snacks. I gotta have some snacks and, oh, by the way, a drink or two, because I love to eat when I'm driving in my new car. Anybody else love to eat? I know there's a few of you. The other one, and I've only been told this because I drive a Toyota Corolla, but if you drive the right new car, like a Jeep Wrangler, there's like a special wave that you do to other drivers of the same car. See, these are all patterns or habits that not only do we do because we have a new car, but they reinforce our identity as a driver of that car, right? There's things we do because of and in order to reinforce this new reality that we're living in. This is the same with your faith. There are a whole bunch of things that you do because you're a follower of Jesus. And in doing so, it also reinforces your identity as a follower of Jesus. So I want to highlight three of these things right here and now. The very first one is church, is going to church. Whether you show up in person or watch online, the act of worshiping with other Christians builds this community and builds within you this sense of identity as a follower of Jesus. The second thing is the Bible. Reading your Bible is one of those things that we do to understand and to learn God and God's will for our lives. It's something that we do because we're a Christian. And as we do it, it reinforces, it strengthens our Christian identity and our faith. The third one is prayer. Praying is simply talking to God. It's one of those things that we do initially because we believe there is a God and we're talking to God. And the more we do it, the relationship grows and it becomes something so much more. Now, I want to suggest to you that these things, I listed them in order of least frequent to most frequent. What I mean by that is church is something that you probably, I'm going to suggest, should be doing weekly. Weekly, you should be gathering with other Christians, worshiping God, and growing together in community. Reading your Bible is something that I suggest you should do daily. Daily, you should seek God through God's word. I struggle with that one sometimes, and so let me tell you a little tip I have. For me, I have what's called the Bible app on my phone, and every day, first thing I do before I 
like get out of bed most days. I'm checking on that Bible app and I'm at least reading the verse of the day. Every day the Bible app gives you a brand new verse of the day. It's a really, really easy way to get into the Bible every day. Now the last one, and this one, you should be doing the most prayer. Now I would suggest to you that prayer should be similar to a conversation with your spouse or if you have children with your child. Which one of you would go days without talking to your spouse or days without talking to your child, especially if you have a young child at home? You couldn't, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be right. The same is true with our conversation or prayer with God. It's something that we should be doing frequently throughout the day, every day. And it doesn't have to be long, it doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be formal. It can be simple and short. Hey God, this is going on, help me out. Or, hey God, what do you think about this? That, that's all prayer needs to be, especially at first. I'd love it for all of you who are online right now, if you just take a second and comment down below, which one of these three, church, Bible, and prayer, which one of these three are you best at? Which one do you do the most reliably or consistently? Which one of these three are you worst at? Which one of these three do you struggle the most with? Again, that's church, reading your Bible, and praying. Now, look, discipleship, it's a journey. It's a lifelong journey. It's something that we begin and it never ends. We continually grow in our discipleship and our following of Jesus. We have good days and bad days. And whether you're in the midst of a really, really great season or a really, really rough patch, don't get discouraged. Don't give up on following Jesus. Don't give up on your discipleship. Don't give up on your faith. Remember, these three practices, church, Bible, and prayer, these are things that are going to strengthen your faith. They're going to help you grow in your faith. They're going to help you fake it till you make it or name it and claim it. And at the end of all of this, I want to echo Paul's words once more from Galatians 5.25. Since we live by the Spirit, let us walk with the Spirit. Friends, may you find this to be truer and truer each and every day. Pray with me if you would. God, we give you thanks for new cars, for new experiences, for new patterns and habits, and for the reminder that this is so similar to our walk with you. Help us to find those patterns that reinforce who we are, that strengthen and grow us in our relationship with you, and draw us together with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our service is nearing completion. The worship team is going to come on back and lead you in one final song. And while they're doing that, we want to give you an opportunity to give back to God in the form of your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings. Now I want to say, as I've said every week, if this is your first, your second, or your third time with us, we don't want any kind of monetary gift from you. We really just want to get to know you. We would love it if you would comment down below and just say, I'm here for the first time, I'm here for the second time, or even I'm here for the third time. But if you've been here more than that and you would like to join us as we make a difference in our communities and in the world, we're going to post a link right down below for you to click on and easily give online. With that said, I'm going to invite you to follow the leadership of our worship team. Sorry.
you to come on back next week. I also want to let you know where we're going next week. We're going to continue this new series that we've begun, but next week, instead of talking about a new job or a new car, next week we're going to be talking about a new neighborhood. That's right, moving to a new community and what that looks like and how that can help us learn about our faith as followers of Jesus. With that said, receive these words of blessing and benediction. May you go forth this day with the God who loves you who longs to have you know that, and who longs to grow closer with you each and every day. Go with Christ and go in his peace. Amen. Hey, so you hung out to the very end. You wanted to hear who those unsung heroes are this week. And I know most weeks 
we've named two people, and we've said these two people are rock stars, they're unsung heroes, but I realize that throughout this entire time of quarantine or shutdown, whatever you want to call it, we have a group of people who are just the greatest, the best, and we have yet to lift them up, and that is all of you. Each and every one of you who joined us online, whether this is your first time or this is your 30th time, which I don't think we've been online that long, each and every one of you who's joined us online, shared the service, commented on it, you're all rock stars. Thank you so much for being our unsung heroes.